I know you all have a powerful urge to communicate. I know it. I see it. Your urge to communicate God's love, to bring people into this church, to help them, to save them, to make their lives better, to make their afterlives everlasting. You have that powerful urge to communicate, but you are failing because the distance between you and everyone else is insurmountable. But I'm here to tell you that the distance is you. It's me. It's all of us. We put the distance there. When we shun our neighbor, when we judge our friends, when we look down at people from other places and other religions, we create an insurmountable distance where there is no distance at all. Where are we today? Where are we today? I say, we are no longer a congregation that believes in hell. A radical change. We are no longer a congregation that says, my way is the only way. We are no longer that kind of church. Associate Pastor Joshua will deliver the prayer for the sick and for those who cannot be here today. About it, but, but he says things like, well, if there's no punishment, why should we be good? And I say, well, we're good because we know that's right. Because if we're just being good because we're scared of getting in trouble, then that's not really being good. But then he says, well, if there's no punishment for being a sinner, isn't that a slap in the face to those of us who are good? But then I say, that's not our problem, worrying about whether or not people are getting punished. I think that's a very good answer, Jenny. I... And then the guy, he said, he asked me, what about Hitler? If there's no hell, what about him? Where does he go? That's a, that's a real question, and I'm asking for an answer. I look at my wife and I say, hey. Hey. I say, how are you holding up there? I'm not sure. And she says, I think more people just left our church. And she says, maybe. And she says, maybe it's not such a good idea to talk about Hitler. <laughs> and we lie in bed. And I think, and she asks, What are you thinking? I'm thinking about that woman. What woman? That woman, Ginny, the, the woman who... Thinking what about her? Did she go to your woman's Bible study group? She did. And she had all those questions. And it sort of made me wonder if she ever asked you any of those questions she asked me. Which made me wonder if you ever tried to answer those questions. And if you did, I, I found myself wondering what you said to try to answer those questions. I'm not suggesting you did anything wrong, or any of what happened was your fault. Oh, no, I know. I'm just curious. No. She never asked me any of those questions. And have others? Have others what? Ask questions similar to the questions that Jenny asked. Have other women in your women's Bible study group, you know, uh, since I delivered that sermon, have they come to you with similar questions and concerns? Yes. And what do you tell them? I tell them that if they have questions about something you've said, then they should ask you, not me. Oh, okay. Because I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know. Um, that's... I appreciate that. Because I believe in hell. I believe in the devil. 
I believe that believing in Jesus, believing that he's the Son of God, and believing that he died for our sins is the only, the only thing that can secure you a place in heaven. Why didn't you tell me this earlier that you disagreed with my sermon? Why didn't you tell me that you were going to deliver this sermon? Why didn't you tell me that you were going to forcibly change what our church believes? Do you still like me? I do still like you. Do you still find me attractive? I do. Do you still find me? Yes, you? of course. Oh, well, that's nice. You are very attractive. <laughs> oh, good to know. <laughs> but, but I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't like you, and I wish I didn't find you so attractive, and I wish I didn't want you here in bed with me, and I wish I didn't think that you're so smart and kind and good, and I wish I didn't find you so magnificent. Because if I didn't feel all those ways, it would be so easy to... I'm afraid that we're not going to be together forever, and I'm afraid that it's going to be my fault, and that God will say, when it comes time to say the things, he'll say, why did you fail him? Why did you let him fall away? Why did you not do everything you could do to keep him from falling away? 